Let's start off at number 10 now with the dodo. The dodo is one of the most famous extinct animals of all time, responsible for coining the phrase as dead as a dodo. The last of these birds was thought to have died out in 1662. They were only found on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. They lived in harmony with the ecosystem there and had no natural predators until humans arrived and killed them off for food. Scientists discussed the possibility of bringing back the dodo from extinction during a TEDx discussion in Washington DC in 2013. The dodo's closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon, and some say that one of its eggs could be fused with the cell of a dodo to create a living dodo. Imagine if that happened, it would ruin that phrase. Next up on number 9 now we have the mammoth. Now this is perhaps the most famous extinct animal of all time. Society has been obsessed with these woolly elephant cousins for decades. Interesting fact for you guys, although most of them did die out about 10,000 years ago, a small population of mammoths survived on Wrangel Island off the coast of Russia until just 3,600 years ago. That's nothing if you think about it. Humans were running around at the end of the Bronze Age during then. Anyway, because of how recently they died out and how many of their bodies became frozen in the permafrost, scientists have actually been able to extract cells from mammoth remains. The plan is then to splice specific mammoth genes into the genome of an elephant embryo to create a sort of mammoth elephant hybrid with all the mammoth traits we recognize. Now this isn't just for no reason either. Some scientists say that these new mammoths could help prevent tundra permafrost from melting and releasing huge amounts of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the thylacine. This species died out in the 1930s after being hunted to extinction in its native Australia. It may look like a dog, but the thylacine actually belonged to the marsupial family and was a relative of kangaroos and koalas. A group of Australian scientists led by Michael Archer have previously worked on bringing back the thylacine from extinction. They called themselves the Lazarus Project. Their efforts only managed to capture some of the fragments of the thylacine DNA though, and not enough for a true clone. Still, even this was enough for people to see the thylacine as a strong candidate for eventual de-extinction. Next up at number 7 now we have the gastric brooding frog. This little frog was native to the eastern coast of Australia and went extinct less than 100 years ago. It got its name from its interesting method of reproduction. The females would swallow their fertilized eggs which would then hatch into tadpoles in the frog's stomach before being vomited out into the water. It sounds gross but it definitely worked. Because of how recently they went extinct, scientists recovered enough genetic material to create create living embryos. They haven't been used to create an actual gastric brooding frog yet, but some argue that even this means they are already back from extinction. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Bucardo. The Bucardo was a wild goat native to the Pyrenees. The last one, a female named Celia, died in January 2000. Scientists preserved her cells and attempted to bring the species back from the dead. They injected the nuclei from Celia's cells into goat eggs that had been emptied of their DNA. They then implanted 50 seven of them into different goat surrogate mothers of closely related species. Only seven of them became pregnant and six of those had miscarriages. One of the goats successfully gave birth to a clone though. Fernandez Arias held the newborn calf in his arms. He said it was struggling to breathe and all of their attempts to help failed. The calf died just 10 minutes later. It was found to have a faulty lung caused by a genetic defect. At the time it was the closest the world has ever come to de-extinction and still remains a possible candidate. Moving on to number 5 now we have the quagga. The quagga is an extinct subspecies of the plain zebra and lived in South Africa. The last wild quagga was hunted to extinction in 1878. The last captive one died in Amsterdam 5 years later. Now, Because of their close relationship to the plain zebra, some scientists have created the quagga project which is attempting to use selective breeding to create a new subspecies that strongly resembles the quagga. In 2016 the project announced they had 6 individuals individuals showing the preferred pattern. The goal is to have 50 of them and then move them to a protected area for continued breeding. Will this count as the quagga being brought back from extinction? Let me know what you think. Alright moving on to number 4 now we have Stella's sea cow. This sea mammal was discovered by Europeans in 1741 on Bering Island in the northern Pacific Ocean. It went extinct just 27 years later after being hunted for its meat, fat and hide. It belonged to a group of species known as Dugongidae. The only survivor 
same species of that group is now the dugong. Some scientists hope that if enough sea cow DNA can be recovered, they can fuse it with the egg of a dugong and bring back the sea cow from extinction. One major problem though is size. Modern dugongs are just a fraction of the size of the extinct sea cow, so the pregnancy would be extremely difficult. Let's just say that. It's a problem that's still being worked on though. Next up at number three now, we have the passenger pigeon. Okay, this one might not be as cool as some of the other animals on our list, but give it a chance. In the 1860s, there were billions of these pigeons across North America. One account said that a flock once passed over southern Ontario that was a mile wide, 300 miles long, and took 14 hours to pass overhead. Less than 50 years later, they were extinct, mainly due to mass hunting. Enough specimens have been preserved so that scientists could reconstruct the birds in entire genome. The plan would then be to fuse this with the egg of the passenger pigeon's closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. However, there is no guarantee that the band-tailed pigeon will then tend to the egg or even look after any successful hatchlings. Next up at number two now, we have the auroch. About 10,000 years ago, the prehistoric settlers of India and Eurasia domesticated the auroch, an animal that looks a lot like a cow. That's because all modern day cattle are the descendants of the auroch. The auroch itself went extinct in the wild, but scientists are hoping to bring it back through back breeding cattle. This is where they breed cattle together that resemble the auroch. They then take the calves that most resemble the auroch and breed them, etc, etc, until eventually you get something that looks a lot like an auroch. One example of this that's already happened is heck cattle. Here's some pictures of them now. However, some people have debated whether these even really look like auroch. They're also a lot smaller too. Maybe they will get there one day though. And finally number one now, we have the Carolina parakeet. This bird was hunted to extinction 100 years ago. It was native to the eastern US, which surprised me because its plumage would suggest it was much more tropical. Its feathers were also the reason it went extinct. Many of them were hunted so that the feathers could be used in women's hats, which were fashionable at the time. Some remained as pets or in captivity, but eventually they all died out. Now as with many others on our list, their extinction being quite recent is a reason why they could make a good candidate for de-extinction. Some people worry though that if it was brought back, history would just repeat itself all over again as their feathers would instantly become valuable. Starting off this countdown, we have the extinct bat. In 2019, the Hills horseshoe bat species were spotted for the first time in 40 years. The bats are home to a Rwandan rainforest. Scientists figured that they were endangered and had gone extinct already, since they hadn't seen them in years. That was until 2019 when scientists were on a 10 day expedition. And they came across these little guys. But when they first captured the bat, they didn't know how great their discovery was going to be. One scientist said, and I quote, we knew immediately that the bat we had captured was unusual and remarkable. The facial features were exaggerated to the point of being comical. It took them three years to then identify what species this bat belonged to. Once they did, that's when they realized that this bat was brought back to life. In our ninth spot, we have Catagonus wagneri. Back in the day, this animal was discovered from early fossils records. They were thought to be extinct and people only knew about them because of the fossils. That was until 1974. That's when a biology professor from University of Connecticut rediscovered them while on a research expedition. In fact, the species was well known to the native people there. However, they are badly endangered. A huge population of them live in a 2400 acre area in Grand Chaco. They hide out in the bushy thorny areas so that they're safe from predators and local hunters. Sadly, only approximately 3,000 remain in the world. Moving on to number eight, we have Tarsier. Now these guys are undeniably cute. Just look at its eyes, like they're so cute and big for its tiny little body. But strangely enough, scientists still don't know much about them. One of the reasons being is that scientists thought that they went extinct in the 1920s. But in May of the early 2000s, while checking a rat trap that they had set in the forest, scientists discovered that they had actually caught a pygmy Tarsier. Sadly, it had died in the trap. But that's what let them know that they were still alive, minus that one. Then in 2008, researchers found a family of them in Lore Lindu National Park. Nowadays, it's believed that there are only 5,000 to 10,000 of these animals in the whole world. And that number is sadly 
falling again instead of rising. Now, this is because these little creatures don't live too long in captivity. In fact, when they are in distress, they apparently try to take their own lives. So that's a reason why it's hard to look after these little guys and keep them off the endangered list. In our seventh spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now, if you all have been a fan of this channel for a while, then you guys know that I hate this guy. Like, I'm not scared of sharks, but this guy, like, he's terrifying. He doesn't even look like a shark. He looks like a mutated shark. Like a shark that scientists tried to cross with a human or something. Anyways, goblin sharks were believed to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891, when researchers spotted it off the coast of Japan. Instantly, they were confused, but also scared, because again, look at this thing. What they found the weirdest, though, is that this shark barely changed over time. They didn't evolve at all. They still look the exact same, hence why they are called a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now the scariest part about them is that they have these weird ligaments in their jaw and that allows them to extend their mouths out and snatch up their prey. Plus their mouths launch out pretty fast. That's also why it makes their mouth look so creepy, you know? In our six spots, we have the tequila fish. And it's a very interesting name for a fish. I hope their relatives are called the vodka fish. So these fish disappeared from the Mexican wild in 2003. This was due to pollution and invasive species. People thought there was no hope that these fish were just going to die off. But turns out that conservationists were able to bring them back to life after a decades long operation. Basically, scientists at Michoacana University University in Mexico took five pairs of these fish in 1998. They then kept the fish safe, studied them, and then they made them reproduce to develop a larger colony. After four years in artificial ponds, scientists were able to increase these five fish to 10,000. However, only 1,500 were released back into the wild. And apparently, the released fish are thriving and reproducing out in the wild. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the coelacanth. You're not gonna believe this, but these fish were around when dinosaurs roamed the earth. In fact, they were believed to have gone extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then, millions of years later, they were rediscovered. In the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought they went extinct around 66 million years ago. So it shocked scientists quite a bit when in 1938, they rediscovered them off the coast of South Africa. They're just alive and thriving. In our fourth spot, we have the singing dog. This animal has been named the singing dog due to their distinctive howl. Sometimes they howl together to form kind of like a choir. Apparently their howls sound like a cross between a wolf's howl and a whale song. They are also called the New Guinea Highland Dogs and are closely related to the Australian Dingo. Now, wildlife biologists thought that these animals went extinct sometime in the 1970s. However, in 2016, they were rediscovered in a remote region of New Guinea. Tests were run on them and it was confirmed that they were the same breed. In our third spot, we have the tree lobster, which is not an animal, so I'm technically cheating having it on today's list because it's an insect, but who cares, okay? The tree lobster is a large black stick insect. In fact, it is said to be one of the rarest insects on earth. Back in the day, they were popular for fishing as they were used for fishing bait. But by the 1920s, they were said to be extinct. Basically, a ship accidentally crashed onto an island and rats aboard the ship got introduced onto the island and threatened these species. But later on, a pair of Australian scientists discovered 24 of these bugs living beneath a single shrub. They ended up taking two pairs, breeding them, and then reintroducing more of these insects to help repopulate them. In our second spot today, we have the night parrot. Night parrots are often referred to as one of the world's most mysterious birds. They were first discovered in 1845 and were extremely rare to spot. That's because they come out at night and only in remote areas. Even then, there had not been a single sighting of these birds for a hundred years, so they were declared extinct. That was until 1979 when a number of them were spotted again. In fact, this bird is the holy grail 
for bird watchers. Some spend decades hoping to get a glimpse of this bird up close. And in our number one spot today, we had the Kashmir musk deer. But I like to call them the vampire deer because they have vampire fangs. So these deer are native to Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, and western Nepal. It was believed that they went extinct in 1948 until they were rediscovered in 2009. However, they are badly endangered. It's said that there are less than 5,000 musk deer throughout the world. The main reason being is because they are a very popular target for hunters. Hunters like to kill them for their musk glands, which are often used in perfumes. They are said to be a rare aphrodisiac and can sell for around $45,000 per kilogram. Now, it is illegal to hunt for them, but that still doesn't stop people. Let's not in at number 10. Whoa, that guy's fast. What is that? His nose is like so long. Is this real? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know how to research this little guy. <laughs> okay, well, apparently that was the elephant shrew, last known to be seen over 50 years ago, but it was rediscovered in August of 2020. These mighty little mouse-like creatures are thriving in Africa. Pretty cool something so small was able to evade a full extinction. So before we get into number nine, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video because it really helps us out. All right, let's see what we have in at number nine. The Tarsier is named, <laughs> whoa, hello there freaky. The Tarsier is named after its long impressive bone in its ankle, you perv. Okay, whoa, what is this little thing? So the animals on this list are pretty tiny. This one is no different. The pygmy taster of the taster family of the world's smallest primates hails from the depths of Indonesia. The taster still lives, but its pygmy's cousin is said to have been extinct until a man accidentally captured and killed one in a mouse trap in 2000. Since then, several pygmy tasters have been found and tagged in Indonesia, and it is believed that they no longer exist. Great big thin membranous ears and those sharp teeth are more like those you'd see on a bat. Okay, wait, first of all, I thought these things were cute, but they're, they're pretty creepy if you ask me. Apparently these guys are adept predators for being able to fit in your palm of your hand. Pretty wild, but anyone else getting like the baby Yoda vibes from this? Perhaps it could live many centuries. Next up at number eight, the terror skink. Thought once to be extinct. Well, this video shows a man who found one in Caledonia in 2018. These little things were said to be the T-Rex of their time. Serious meat-eating predator reptiles. They got their name from their mouthful of sharp teeth. So this skink is the top predator here on this island in New Caledonia. There's no doubt that this guy is the T-Rex of this island. Number seven, is this real life right now? What is that? There's no way that thing existed in our life. Like what world was that real? And those sharks are like, when they eat things, their, their melts come out of their mouths and it's just like, it's, it's so horrifying. Here's another picture. I mean, it looks like it's it's real. Apparently these things went extinct many years ago, but now it has been rediscovered. This last picture right here looks so real and it looks like it's kind of like slimy. And this one doesn't look like it was taken in the water. This one looks like it was captured, it was taken out of the water. But you can see what I'm saying about like the mouth. I'm not sure where it begins and where it ends. But is it just me or is its teeth like exactly spaced out? Kind of creepy, sharp teeth. I'd be scared if I was like swimming and I saw one of these. Okay, so the images that we were seeing is actually the goblin shark. You guys can search it online. You guys can see so many more pictures of this. Well, it was actually said to be extinct over 125 million years ago. But like other deep sea creatures, it didn't actually disappear, it didn't go extinct. It just hid in the depths beyond human discovery and it is said to be back and is thriving. These pictures were taken from National Geographic in 2020, so just months ago, it 
it was actually in August. So the images you're seeing is legit. Moving right along to number six, move on murder wasp is Wallace giant bee or the mega chili Pluto is said to be back in action. In 2018, two of these bad boys were available for the highest bidder and none other than eBay itself, the place where we're buying Pokemon cards. I just came across a Charizard, 25 grand. Should I buy it? <laughs> okay, so apparently you can buy this creature, like you can make a transaction if you have $9,000. In 2019, a single female was found in a termite nest and reopened the species as no longer being extinct. Well, here's a clip that I wanted to share with you guys. So 100% authentic and to scale. Okay. Maybe not, but could you guys imagine like that was the size of the killer bees? Like just absolutely massive. Moving right along, number five. What sound does a deer make? Go in the comment section and tell me. I, I don't know how you're gonna tell me a sound. Like, well, a cow would just be M O O O O O. For a deer, I don't know how you would type out the sound of a deer, but we're not bringing you just any deer on this list. The Kashmir musk deer has been endangered, extinct, and back to endangered again. I mean, how does this even happen? Is this real life right now? One was discovered again in 2009 and they were back on the endangered list once again, likely because these guys are targeted for hunting because of their musk glands, which are said to be an aphrodisiac and can go for a whopping $45,000 on the black market. And just like that, number four, these five inch freaks are also known as three lobsters and they were thought to be completely eradicated decades ago in a small island off the coast of Australia. But 24 were found in 2001, and they were sent to a zoo in Australia, which has led them to the successful breeding and repopulation of these creatures. Whoa. That's kind of, that's like a like a stick a stick insect, right? What does that what does that remind you? Of? It's like a I don't know I don't know what it is. But it's so, it's just so creepy. Okay, well obviously that was the tree lobsters. You know what, it kind of looks like it has like the scales of a lobster, the tree part. Is, is like the, uh, the the tree stick thing that I was referring to. Yeah, you guys are seeing a picture right now of uh, those stick insects. It's pretty, they're pretty cool, but I don't know, I don't know what they do. I don't know much about them. From there, number three. <laughs> What the, is, is that just a dog? Like a, this, this breed of dog went extinct and now it's back and now it's howling for werewolves. It's howling for its werewolf mates. Doesn't sound like a normal dog. So maybe this is like a different creature. Well, this species of dog is actually called New Guinea singing dog and hails from Papua New Guinea. They were thought to be extinct for decades until a pack was discovered in 2016. So there have only been two spotted in the wild, but there are some places around the world like the United States that have rescued what is to believed to be this breed of dog that went extinct and now they're in captivity to try to breed them, to expand them. They're clearly known for singing, you know, hence their name, hence the video we just watched. All right, moving right along, number two. So many of you guys think that Bigfoot is an urban legend. Well, I know that it's real. Okay, I never saw it, but like I've, I've seen stuff like on TV and I think it's facts. Well, this creature that is like some kind of like half man, half ape that lives a lonely life in the wilderness. Well, that video was from 2020 in Utah. It's pretty far away, so it's hard to tell, but I can tell. That's Bigfoot confirmed <laughs> for sure Bigfoot. But if that's how big that thing looks from far away, like imagine how big it is when you're up close, maybe like 20 feet. All I know is I wouldn't want to come across one. So this video was uploaded August 1st of this year, 2020. If it's not Bigfoot, then what is it? <sighs> Let me know in the comment section below, what the heck creature did we just watch? And finally, in at number one, Oh, 
Okay, so that clip is obviously from a movie. If you guys didn't know, I didn't know at first. I thought it was real. But the Megalodon is said to be a real creature and we couldn't not put this on this list. This is a real and verified clip of what was thought to be a Megalodon underwater filmed in Japan. There are reports that the Megalodon was found a couple years ago in Mariana's Trench, hence the movie, hence the inspiration for the movie. Well, it was found in the Mariana Trench a couple years ago, and there was all the fuss around this creature from some of the well-known sources like Shark Week and obviously Hollywood movies that hyped this creature up. Considering 95% of the ocean has not yet been discovered by humans, it could be very possible that this thing is real in 2020. And there's probably so many other creatures we have no idea about. Okay, starting off with number 10, like we always do, we have the Megatherium. This animal is also known as the giant ground sloth, and they were one of the largest terrestrial animals that ever lived on this planet. They measured in at about 20 feet in length, but they were a slow moving herbivore, so animals didn't really fear this creature. Early humans in South America hunted this massive creature, and they hunted it to its extinction 10,000 years ago, or did they? In the deep jungle of South America, there there are so many tales about terrifying creatures who stands at 10 feet tall. They have enormous backward facing claws and thick brown fur. All of these characteristics are consistent with the Megatherium's description. So maybe these aren't just stories. Next up, number nine, we have the Mastodon. These hairy creatures are prehistoric relatives of the modern elephant. Mastodons have tusks, floppy ears, and a long nose, which is very similar to the elephant. Mastodons appeared on Earth about 27 million to about 30 million years ago, primarily in North and Central America. They typically stayed in the woodlands areas or sometimes around valleys and swamps. They apparently went extinct about 10,000 years ago and most of the theories say that they went extinct because a lot of the scientists believe that the Earth warmed up too quickly from the Ice Age for the Mastodon to adapt to or that humans hunted them to extinction. So although they went extinct so long ago, a man named David Ingram described seeing creatures twice the size of a horse, hairy and in the shape of an elephant. He accurately described what a mastodon would look like and he said he saw them while he was traveling to the United States. There are even other people claiming to have spot these creatures in modern times. Next up number 8 we have the Japanese wolf. Japan used to have two species of wolf that used to live on islands. Biologists consider the Japanese wolf to be extinct, however, there are a ton of rumors circulating of people seeing them in the wild regions of Japan. These two wolf species became extinct in the late 1800s and the early 1900s due to rabies, loss of habitat, and hunting by humans. Despite their extinction, a Japanese wolf was sighted in 1910 and then in the 1930s and then again in the 1950s. If that wasn't enough to convince you that these creatures are still alive today, there have been a ton of sightings in the 1900s. Skeptics believe the humans are mistaking a hybrid wolf dog for the Japanese wolf. That's definitely a possibility, but what if the Japanese wolf was still alive today? Pouncing in at number 7, we have the Javan Tiger. They are a relatively small tiger that is as tall as a Great Dane. On the island of Java in Indonesia, this was the home of the Javan Tiger, but as humans occupied more and more of the island, the Javan Tiger was forced to move to the uninhabitable parts of the island. They were hunted by the humans so they could make more room for farming and unfortunately by the time the government stepped in to preserve their species, the tiger was already too far gone. However, many locals have spotted Javan tiger claw marks and footprints and they could still be alive because they are excellent at hiding and avoiding humans. Also in 1995, a Javan forester discovered a large group of these tigers still living on the island. These sightings continued into the early 2000s and people are still finding evidence that the species still exists today. Swimming into our number 6 spot on our list, we're talking about the Plesios. Saurus. This is apparently an extinct marine reptile who lived approximately 135 years ago in the Jurassic period. They have long necks, thin bodies, wide flippers, and small heads. They have very
very sharp teeth and incredibly strong jaws, so they're able to feed on any fish that came in their path. Creatures matching this description have been spotted all over the world in lakes and in oceans. A lot of people believe that this animal exists and people are just calling it the Loch Ness Monster. It is actually possible that these animals survived and they're just living in the depths of the ocean where humans are unable to explore. If this plesiosaurus still exists today, that would also explain why people have reported seeing sea dragons from around the world. The Tasmanian tiger leaps onto this list at number 5. This species is also known as the thylacin and they were a timid and a nocturnal creature who was considered to be a major pest and a dangerous threat to livestock. They look similar to a medium or large dog, except they had a stiff tail and an abnormal pouch, kind of like a kangaroo. The government set up a bounty system between 1888 and 1909 in order to get rid of these species. So people went all over Australia killing the Tasmanian tiger, and they officially went extinct in 1936. Or did they? Since its extinction, there have been many sightings of the Tasmanian tiger in Tasmania and Australia. It has been spotted so many times times that a lot of people really believe that the Tasmanian tiger still exists today. Here's a clip that was taken in 1973 proving that these animals might still be alive. Take a look at this. Marching in at number 4, the woolly mammoth. This would be amazing to see this alive today. These creatures were closely related to the Asian elephants. Woolly mammoths look a lot like them except for a couple major differences. They were covered with a thick coat of brown hair to keep them warm in the frigid weather. Even though the woolly mammoth went extinct around 10,000 years ago, we have a lot of information about them because of the permafrost in the Arctic preserved their bodies and left them in almost perfect condition. But what if I told you that these giant creatures might still be roaming the earth. There are a lot of people who have claimed that they saw a woolly mammoth in the modern times. In the late 1940s, frozen mammoths were discovered with fresh meat still in their mouths, and every once in a while there are stories all over the internet of people claiming that they've seen an elephant creature with thick fur. Take a look at this video I have for you guys. Okay, so a man filmed what appears to be a woolly mammoth in Siberia. So what do you guys think? Did a woolly mammoth go extinct 4,000 years ago, or could they still be alive today? The Beijing Dolphin comes onto our list at number three. The Beijing Dolphin, or the Chinese River Dolphin, is the first dolphin to be declared extinct in modern times. This is just incredibly sad. It is the first large mammal species in 50 years to have gone extinct, and it was solely due to mankind. This animal was declared extinct in December 2006 due to harmful fishing practices such as the use of gill nets, rolling hooks, or electrical stunning. There were efforts put in place to save this species but none of them apparently worked. But even though there are thought to be extinct, a beige was spotted in 2007 by a team of researchers. Unfortunately, there was only that one sighting since the extinction, but it's still possible that these dolphins might still be alive today. Stepping into this list at number two, we have the mysterious Bigfoot. Other otherwise known as the Gigantopithecus. Their fossils indicate that they were the largest known primates that ever lived. They stood at a height of 3 meters or about 9.8 feet and they weighed as much as 540 to 600 kilograms which is about 1320 pounds. I mean damn. Now these are one creatures I don't know if I want to be alive today because they're pretty terrifying. However scientists almost knows nothing about this mysterious ape. The first piece of evidence that this ape existed it was discovered by a German paleontologist who found a large molar. Okay, so get this, it was dubbed as a dragon tooth. For years, this was the only trace of this ape, but since then, researchers have found dozens of teeth and a few partial jaws of the Gigantopithecus. It is believed that this giant creature went extinct because the forest shrank and they weren't able to find enough food to survive and reproduce. But some people believe that the Gigantopithecus survived in 
evolved into Bigfoot. The two creatures look very similar and there have been many people reporting that they have seen this mysterious creature. Okay, so topping this list, in at number one, we have the mighty Megalodon. This species of shark was the largest to have ever lived. Paleontologists believe that the Megalodon was capable of growing up to at least 52 feet, which is three times as long as the longest great white shark ever. No one knows for sure what the Megalodon looked like because all that remains from the prehistoric monster are some teeth and a few vertebrae, but paleontologists are able to make a very educated guess. Originally, the Megalodon was believed to be wiped out by global warming. However, there have been many sightings all over the world by fishermen and sailors who have claimed to see this large shark. That couldn't be the great white shark because it was way too big. There was also a fossil of the Megalodon tooth found deep in the ocean, which means that they still might be living in the deep sea and occasionally they come up to the surface. I mean, after all, there's still 95% of the world's ocean that still hasn't been explored, which is insane to me. All I know for sure is that I would never want to have an encounter with these beasts. Imagine surfing and then bam, the Megalodon is right there behind you. Yeah, your lunch. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Stellar Sea Cow. Stellar indeed. Okay, the Stellar Sea Cow was named after George Wilhelm Stellar, who discovered this massive creature in 1741 during the Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition. They found her right after the crew became shipwrecked. What a lovely surprise to an otherwise horrible situation. They were around over 2.6 million years ago, and they were no match for humans. They only swam about a meter deep, and once humans came into the picture with, you know, hunting and aggression and everything, they were quite easy to hunt. George Stellar commented that the animals had an uncommon love for their families, which in turn made it even easier for us to hunt them. Considering the one year gestation period, the species just couldn't reproduce fast enough to keep up with our hunting. But this list, we have a little hope now, don't we? Scientists were able to sequence the genome, which could mean we could see the creature again one day. Hopefully. The answer may lie right now in the DNA of a dugong. Dugongs are the cow of the sea. You know what, they're great. Let's have all the cows of all seas back immediately. Number nine, passenger pigeons. The passenger pigeon once ruled the skies over Canada as recently as the 19th century. Billions of these bright orange birds would just paint the skies. They would fly in flocks so large, it would block out the sun for a short amount of time. Isn't that beautiful? It's like some Lion King stuff right there. But only a few decades passed and passenger pigeons are now no more. So what happened? Well, the very last passenger pigeon, her name was Martha. She passed away in the Cincinnati Zoo back in 1914. So we took a look at her DNA to see if Martha held any secrets to her extinction. They discovered Martha had a low genetic diversity for such a growing population. Natural selection and hunting obviously just eliminated the coolest looking bird out there by far. A little different than the pigeons we have today, that's for sure. The last one died in 1914, but in 2019, paleontologists found remains of the pigeon protected in indigenous lands in Canada, up in Northwest Territories. They blended passenger pigeon DNA with Archaeopteryx dinosaur DNA. Yeah, we're bringing back pigeons with a hint Oh, dinosaur. What could go wrong? Number eight, the woolly mammoth. It was announced only months ago that a team of scientists and entrepreneurs over at a company called Colossal are planning to bring back, are planning to bring the woolly mammoth back to life. That's just the thing we need right now in this world. Out of all the problems, we're like, you know what could solve it? The woolly mammoth, for sure. That'll bring jobs back. The Siberian tundra thousands of years ago was once full of these woolly mammoths, but climate change began to slow them down just a little bit. And humans also needed food, so that surely didn't help. These guys provided warmth and, well, look at them. Obviously, a lot of food. Genetics company Colossal raised over $15 million to try and bring this thing back to life. Honestly, I hope it works, but then, I mean, now what? All these things are great scientifically, but it's like, and then what? Number seven, the dodo bird. Speaking of the devil, this is, we're definitely gonna eat these guys. Dodo birds were once big and beautiful. These flightless ground nesting birds once filled the island of Meritius, located in the Indian Ocean. They had massive talons, they were big gray and blue, and they didn't have any natural predator, which is pretty sweet. They didn't have one until we came along. Around 1507, the island was discovered by Portuguese sailors and, well, the rest is history. They were the easiest bird to hunt, hence the phrase, dead as a dodo. They weren't just loved by sailors either. We're not just 100% here to blame, you know? Monkeys, rats, pigs, any animal that made its way to the island easily had their eggs for lunch. So yeah, it didn't take a long time for the dodo bird population to be completely wiped out. The last dodo was hunted in 1681, but can we bring back the dodo bird? Are we doing it? I think we're gonna do it. Scientists found an extremely well-preserved dodo skeleton back in 2007, so we may have a chance at picking some DNA apart here. A research facility near Melbourne, Australia is currently trying to use pigeon genes to bring this bird back to life. I mean, I'm all for the idea of bringing back an animal. Scientifically, that's a feat in itself, but 
Do we really think nobody's gonna make dodo chicken wings? I'm just saying. That's just a problem waiting to happen. Number six, Pyrenean Ibex. The last Pyrenean Ibex was a female named Celia. A falling tree sadly killed her in 2000. She was a subspecies of the Spanish Ibex, and the Pyrenean Ibex were native to the Pyrenees Mountains on the border of Spain and France, as her name hints towards. Back in the medieval ages, though, their population was reduced drastically to an endangered level. So it wasn't just recently, it was way back, you know, because of, again, Hi, we got hungry. They were all over the place and knights and swords and bows and armies to feed. They were hunted down, sadly. Disease spread by humans also played an important role in their demise during this time. The Pyrenean Ibex was successfully cloned and brought back from extinction for seven minutes. So we actually did this one. DNA from the last living lady was implanted in the womb of a domestic goat. Lung complications are why the clone didn't last, but listen to what I just said. They made a clone. Seven minutes is a start. I think I could handle a clone of myself for seven minutes, and then after that, I'm tapping out. Number five, Tasmanian tiger. Once native to Australia, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylakine, it was a massive carnivorous marsupial that went extinct around the 1930s. Major factors here, as you guessed, climate change, hunting, and its genetic diversity wasn't all too great. It was sad on one hand because these beautiful creatures disappeared so recently, but it's recent enough that we have a shot at bringing them back. So we're like, ah, oh, but maybe, maybe. Yeah, imagine looking outside and seeing this thing on your front yard. Are we ready for this? Specimens still remain preserved in jars. Thank God for those jars. About time we open those things up, right? All those jar guys are like, hmm, finally, pull this one out. Already we have some of the Tasmanian tiger genes present after scientists inserted them into a mouse fetus. The Australian Museum has been working hard to bring this beast back to life. They're only still lacking the DNA to fully recreate it. So if you have any jars of Tasmanian tiger parts, you know, help us out, hit those thumbs. Number four, the great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow to 30 inches long and its tiny wings would be only used to swim. Had little tiny, little wings. The wings were much smaller. They were about 13 centimeters long, little flappy arms. No wonder they couldn't fly. Look at these things, oh my God. They were cute, but obviously they were quite defenseless. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most of these great ox were hanging out. Newfoundland looked like the iceberg from Club Penguin, and then we just rolled in and were like, ho, 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 we are so hungry. It was packed, so they rapidly declined, and by 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by a single fisherman on Eldi Island just off the coast of Iceland. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs. Remember those jars of organs always coming in handy. They plan on editing their DNA in the closest living species, which is now the razor-billed auk. The organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one, and I'm hoping they pull through. Number three, the moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago. Moa were these flightless birds, massive, might I add, and archeologists first discovered its fossil in a cave. Its flesh and everything was still attached. That's the gross part. These ancient birds would reach about five feet tall, and when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think that's quite petite in comparison. These birds stopped flying right after the dinosaurs went extinct. Interesting timing. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University in Canberra, these birds safely roamed the land after they didn't need to make these daring dino escapes in the sky. They walked around, got fat, and would hang out in caves. Honestly, pretty ideal. Phillips says this is an advantage when it comes to birds and evolution because wings, be it big or small, kill energy. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature lose the ability to fly, but it's because they're eating good, they're comfortable now. Scientists have now found more MOA DNA from ancient eggshells, so it's possible that we may see these fatties soar the skies once again. Number two, Megatherium aka giant ground sloths. That's a bit of a nicer name. Yeah, sloths, let's bring those back. Wait, they're already here, hmm? I'm confused, Taylor. Sloths used to be a lot bigger than we think. We often look at them now for being so slow and silly. The movie Ice Age or Zootopia, they sure didn't help their case. Now, of course, the giant ground sloth is closely related to our modern three-toed sloth, but luckily for us, today's sloths aren't that big. They're not the same size as an elephant, which is pretty sweet. That would be a horror film. If a giant elephant-sized sloth started to climb that tree, slowly, might I add, ugh, I'd be sick. We may be able to bring this one back, although they died off 8,000 years ago. DNA samples were extracted from their hair remains, so the next step now is to develop a fetus in an artificial womb. That's the hard part. That's where science and technology might just do the rest. But as of right now, we just we've got a pile of hair. We're like, maybe. And finally, number one, the gastric brooding frog. I'm a big fan of frogs and toads, all that stuff. Except for when they hatch eggs out of their back. That's arguably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. 
Well, maybe show you after, maybe, I don't know. These gastric brooding frogs would swallow their eggs and then hatch them out of their mouth. So if you watch them give birth in reverse, it would be pretty confusing. That would be a horror film. They went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have figured out how to implant these dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. Let's just hope these new ones aren't born out of your back. Starting off number 10 now, we have the alligator snapping turtle. Look at these things. They look like the result of asking a 10 year old to draw what things 100 million years ago looked like. Now surprisingly, they wouldn't be far off with that. You see, these creatures are mainly found in the southeast of the United States. They belong to a family with a long fossil history going right back to the late Cretaceous era from 66 to 72 million years ago. Ever since then, these 400 pound turtles have been just doing their thing. And their thing is mainly just being the heaviest freshwater turtle in the world. They have a large heavy head and a long thick shell with three dorsal ridges of large scales. It's no wonder that some people have confused them for actual living dinosaurs. Because of their name, most people stay well clear of these creatures. You don't want a snapping turtle to snap your finger off. However, scientists have found that snapping turtles bite about as hard as humans do and not nearly as hard as other turtles. If you've ever been bitten by another person, you'll know it can be painful, but hey, at least you still have your finger at the end of it, I hope. Next up at number nine now, we have the goblin shark. These are a rare species of deep sea shark and if I'm honest, they're pretty ugly, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Their scientific name is actually Mitsukurina Otsutoni. That's a Japanese name named after the Tengu, a mythical creature often depicted with a long nose and very red face, a bit like a goblin. This species is an astonishing 125 million years old. Around that time, human ancestors looked a bit like small rodents, so yeah. These things are very old. They're so old that scientists sometimes call them a living fossil. They're really interesting creatures. They have a flat snout lined with openings that serve as electrical sensors that track down their food. You see the fish they eat give off electrical impulses whenever they move that the goblin shark picks up on. They're big, but sneaky, easily able to catch their prey off its guard. Whatever they're doing, it's working, and they've been around for a very long time. Moving on to number eight now, we have the giant stingray. This may look fake, I promise you it's not. Most of the time when you hear the word giant before an animal's name, it probably died out a long time ago. The giant scorpion, giant centipede, that sort of thing. The giant stingray didn't get the memo. It's still alive and kicking and stinging. These things can be over six feet across, 16 feet long, and weigh up to 1300 pounds. If that isn't scary enough, they also have a 15 inch serrated poison spike protruding from their tail. The good news, if there is any, is that the giant stingray is generally not aggressive towards humans. If you do annoy one though, it's serious. Their sting is sheathed in toxic mucus and is capable of piercing bone. They're normally found in Indochina, Borneo, and across Southeast Asia. Their desire for seclusion is probably the main reason that modern science didn't even record them until 1852, and perhaps the reason they've stayed alive for so long. Next up at number six now, we have the triops. There's no mistaking these, they definitely look prehistoric. Looking at a triops really is like looking at a fossil come to life. They're crustaceans, that have a fossil record reaching back 200 million years ago. Honestly, I'm gonna say it now, that puts anything on this list to shame in terms of age. 200 million years old. The dinosaurs only went extinct about 65 million years ago, which is practically last Thursday compared to just how long the triops has been around. For such a long lived species though, the individual members don't really survive that long at all, just 90 days once they reach their adult stage. An interesting thing to note about the triops is that their eggs are probably a lot tougher than them. An adult triops can survive temperatures of about 34 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or 40 degrees for two hours. Not bad. Their eggs, however, are something else. The eggs enter a state of extended diapause when dry, meaning they can tolerate temperatures of up to 98 degrees Celsius for up to 16 hours. That's just below boiling point. Unlike some of the others on our list, the triops are not endangered and can actually be bought as pets for aquariums at home. One of the product's names for them is Aquasaurus, a fitting name for such an ancient looking creature. Moving on to number five now, we have the alligator gar. That sounds like I just mispronounced the end of it there, but no, it really is the alligator gar. Despite the alligator part of its name, this is actually a fish. It lives in fresh water in North America and has done for a very long time. Fossil records show this fish is over 100 million years old. This has earned it the nickname of a living fossil. They're big things too, reaching up to 10 feet in length and weighing up to 300 pounds. It can live up to 50 years old as well. And let's get back to the alligator part of that name, shall we? As you can see from the pictures, they earned their name from having a broad snout and dual rows of 
sharp teeth. Unlike alligators though, they pose no threat to humans. They're slow moving animals and feed mainly on small fish, small mammals and insects. For me though, it's their scales that are most interesting. They're dark olive ganoid scales. That means they're bone like and in the shape of a diamond. They're also big enough to be used as arrowheads and hard enough that they will cause sparks when struck with an axe. You will have to take my word on that though. Please don't go and attack these fish with an axe. Moving on to number four now, we have the lamprey. These are some of the creepiest looking things I have ever seen. They're the stuff of nightmares. They belong to a family of jawless fish. Instead of a jaw, they have this toothed funnel-like sucking mouth. They range in size from five to 40 inches in length. Imagine a three and a half foot long one of these crawling up your leg in a river. Luckily, they don't really go for humans. They go for other fish. Their preferred method of attack is to just eat their way into the side of the fish and just keep going until they've eaten them from the inside out. Lovely stuff. They're called fish, but really they're sometimes not even considered vertebrates. You could say they don't have a backbone. No offense, lampreys. Next up at number two now, we have the frilled shark. We've got another shark on the list now, and just like the last one we talked about, it's been around for a very long time, about 95 million years. This thing is just strange looking. It looks out of this world, at least the modern world we live in today. The frilled shark lurks in the deep. It's been caught as deep as 5,150 feet down. That might be good news for most swimmers because these things look vicious. Frilled sharks have upwards of 300 pronged teeth, which act as sharp hooks to trap struggling prey. They have an insane ability to open their mouths extremely wide and can swallow things up to one and a half times their length. If these things sound a bit creepy then you could try avoiding them, but it would be difficult. If I'm honest, they are everywhere. They've been found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, off the coast of Norway, Scotland, Ireland, France, Morocco, Australia and Japan. They may not come to the surface very often, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Coming at number two now, we have the giant salamander. The giant Chinese salamander has been plodding around on earth in basically the same form for about 30 million years. It's the largest salamander and largest amphibian in the world, reaching up to 5.9 feet in length. As you might expect from the name, it's mainly found in the rocky mountain streams and lakes of China. Now, despite surviving for this long, it's now classed as critically endangered in the wild due to habitat loss, pollution, and overconsumption. Its numbers are thought to have dropped more than 80% since the 1950s. When it comes to how creepy this creature is, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that they pose no real threat to humans. Giant Chinese salamanders are nearly blind and feed mainly on smaller salamanders, worms, and crayfish. The bad news is they make pretty creepy noises. They've been known to make barking, whining, hissing, and crying sounds. Some of these noises sound so much like the crying of a young human child that they are now known in the Chinese language as the infant fish. Yeah, no thanks. Sounds like a horror movie. And finally, number one now, we have the Tuatara. These reptiles can only be found in one place in the whole world, New Zealand. They owe their name to the Maori language. Tuatara translates to peaks on the back. 200 million years ago, they used to be one of many similar species that lived all over. Now, they're the only ones left. For this reason, they have fascinated science as they provide a unique window into how reptiles would have looked hundreds of millions of years ago. They come in greenish, brown, and gray colors. That makes it sound like there's some sort of toys you can buy. Anyway, they measure up to 31 inches from head to tail tip and can weigh up to three pounds. They have two rows of teeth on the upper jaw, overlapping one row on the lower jaw, and they're the only species in the world that have teeth like that. For many years, there were thought to be none of them left in the wild of New Zealand due to habitat loss. In 2008, though, a tuatara nest was uncovered with a hatchling inside. It's thought to be the first case of a successful breeding in the wild for over 200 years. That's good news. Nice. Thank you.